Oh my God, it is the midpoint of the year, which you know means it's time to do a mid-year review, refocus, and reboot. Join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 172. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Yeah, it is absolutely blowing my mind that it is July. How the heck did that happen? Uh, I don't know. I mean, as we record this, it's July 1st, and, and that's really? when I'm like, holy crap, the entire first half of the year of 2021 is behind us, and I don't even know how that happened. I mean, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It always feels fast, I mean, but... Not like a, I mean, it's been busy, so that's probably why it has gone so fast. We, you know, come up for air a little bit every once in a while. Do you know it, that means in about another 10 days, I will have been in Florida for six yeah, months? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah, Just in I really time for hurricane be- season. There you go. Yeah. Welcome. Well, we've certainly been having rain every day, and I can see that that little tropical storm or whatever. Is it been a cat one? No, it's still a tropical storm right now, but yeah. it's been named. It's Elsa. Elsa's out Elsa there. is heading towards the bay or uh, to the Gulf. The Gulf. Uh, it's still down in the islands. The Yeah, she's supposed islands to not even be a, even a threat to the Florida and the Gulf Coast until uh, late. Monday or Tuesday. Well, hopefully it'll be cleared up by the time you take a trip uh, out to Florida. I, of course, are always, uh, I'm always. <laughs> you know, you attract, to... I think you attract the hurricane. On the Wink News app. Thank you very much, Wink News. You keep me informed. Matt, of I on. look at Wink, the Wink uh, app every day, the Weather Authority, uh, even though it's down there in Fort Myers. I, I love that map because it has the best radar and just they it's do. very accurate. It is a, and, and like I've said this before to people, just if you don't live in Florida, it's okay. I use the Wink Weather app in California it's all the hilarious. time and it's very good as well. We it don't have good. as many uh, things to track via Doppler radar. However, <laughs> every once in a while we do. All right. Well, we are here celebrating a half a year gone by, and we're going to focus on our business. Yes, we are, because we are the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where reality and real estate meet. That's right. And it's time to get real, folks. And if a year's gone by and you're not where you want to be, there's still hope. You have a whole nother six months to, to make those adjustments. So there's three things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about review, refocus, and reboot. So let's start with review. Now, I always like to start on a positive. So what I want you to do first is time block one to two hours. As soon as you hear this, put it in your calendar. In the next week, you need to make this happen, okay? Don't just like, oh, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. Because you're really you a business owner, right? You are a business owner, so you've got to focus on what, it, what do you need to do? What's working? What's not working in your business? And this review is a great opportunity to do it. So the first thing I want you to do is grab a pad of paper or your journal or just pull up an app or note taking thing, whatever it is you prefer to do and carve out at least an hour to go through this process. And I don't want you to focus on, I know what's in everybody's ahead because it's in mine, all the things I haven't done. I haven't accomplished that yet and I haven't done that yet or my business is not where I want it to be. I, I want you to flip the script and go the other way with it and focus on the things that have worked out for you. What have you accomplished in the last six months? So Matt and I will just do this in your business and in your personal life. It can be that too, right? It's a, it's a balance. You're a balanced human being. You don't just work 24 seven. That's right. So what have I accomplished? I picked up and I moved across the country and I established myself in the last six months. That is uh, that gets a little gold star on the list of of getting settled and get set up. I just also, here's another accomplishment for me. I finally have uh, put together my website for here, <laughs> my real estate website and got a, a game plan going for recruiting a couple people to work with me. Here's another one for me. We re- uh, recorded a ton of training program uh, training programs 
Uh, we have a couple great clients that we're working with and we have the new real estate sales builder program, which is going to is available now. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today because we're going to give you a free mini course to help you with what, uh, you know, some of your fundamentals today. Um, so those are some things that are off the top of my head. Uh, Matt, what about you? What, what have you yeah, accomplished? A lot of our uh, business accomplishments have been the same, right? So working on the same stuff. And we have been really busy since January recording. I mean, my gosh, you know, talking about this in courses, we, we put together several new courses, but I mean, my gosh, between you and I and Cosmo, we've, we have recorded easily over 150 uh, yep. videos since then, which is we've got a, a LinkedIn lot, course. A we've got, what else do we have? We have a YouTube course. We have a LinkedIn course. Yeah, we, we have, have real, estate, real estate sales builder, which is 119 lessons. Yeah, so, you know, there's pretty just a exciting stuff. stuff. Yeah. Uh, on a personal level, uh, though, you know, just a, those little things that you want to get off your list. You know, I, I've been working with the Veterans Administration for some uh, veterans benefits for my mother. And uh, it's just one of those things that has taken forever. And you just have to stay on top of that. And that all came to fruition a couple months ago. So just little things like that that you stay on and you can check off are they can help, they help and you I have, move forward. I have two for you. You you and your lovely wife, Laura, have gone on too many marathon drives for the day to get to the <laughs> national parks that we have done as well because you know you uh and, it, and it's funny we were our our friends in king's canyon when we were down there just the other day uh you know that's a 12 hours in the car for a five hour stay right but to us the drive is half the fun but just being away and out of the out literally out of cell phone uh reach for five hours is very rejuvenating. And I would re uh, recommend everybody try it because you can really refocus when you don't have all that noise going on. Wonderful. And that's actually a good thing. We'll talk a little, we'll come back to that yep. and things you can do to refocus. So, all right. So you're going to do the positives. And if you need some help with that, just go back and look at what you posted on social media. Okay. A lot of times we post a lot more positive. Some people do negatives, but positives. Look in your camera roll if you don't delete all your photos. I bet there's some things in there that are going to help you go, oh, yeah, I did that and I did that. So do that first. All right. Right. Next, break out your 2021 business planning goals. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you, you don't have that? Do you, do you not have a business plan and goals? What? Well, guess what? We have you covered on that. Not only do we have a just basic free business plan course um, that we've updated that you can grab for free over at WBNLcoaching.com. We also have uh, our first module. We're going to give you our first module for free. We call it the fundamentals, real estate agent fundamentals. It's not just for brand new agents. This course, by the way, was designed for all agents. It will help someone who's new or newer in the business. But honestly, we also designed it throughout talking to whoever our client might be, whether you're new or you're a seasoned veteran, because of all these years of coaching people, I have found that people that are successful in the business need to get back to the basics and never really put some of the basic systems in place. Or maybe there's an area of your business you need to focus on. And Sales Builder has it all, but we're going to give you our complete module one, which is all the fundamentals, including the tutorials, the business plan, the budgets, the tracking, all of the best stuff on how to do a business plan because it's never too late to do your business plan. So yes, I just and say, pull out your business plan. And you know, maybe you just wrote down, I'm going to do this many transactions and this is what I want you to do right now. I want you to, to, to see what did you do? What did you say you were going to do and how'd you do? So are you on track? Are you behind? Are you ahead? Some people are ahead, even this crazy market we've had uh -huh. since last year. Some people are doing better because they've made the mindset adjustment and they've taken, they're not all uh, depressed and funked out about, you know, oh, this is a horrible market. You know, you got to rise above folks That's and right. you might just need something to get you regenerated and, and excited about the business again. All right. And we talk a lot about that here on the podcast. So how many closings have you had so far? How many were buyers? How many were um, listings? How's your pipeline looking? Frankly, everybody's pipeline ought to be looking great if you've been really uh, working all the time and putting in that lead gen activity because there's so many people sitting on the fence. There's so many folks that are going to become buyers and sellers. And I think in the near, you know, obviously in this next six months and into new year, 2022 is probably going to be the best year for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And honestly, there are going to be loosening of the market, in my opinion. It's already starting to happen. But that means your pipeline. Have you been doing a great job staying in touch with them? So that's what I want you to look at. What's your average sales price? I bet possibly you could be doing less transactions but made more money. Why? Because the prices have gone up. That's right. And maybe there's, you know, so take a look at that. Compare it to last year. Some, some people, and also the cycle of how quickly a transaction closes, 
has been really fast because we get a home on the market. It's sold in a couple days. And in some cases, it's a two week. If it's cash, it might be a two week closing period. So you're getting commissions faster if you're out there working. Uh, you know, 30, 45 days, you're not having to wait. If you're selling listing homes, you're not waiting for two or three months for the houses to get sold. So there's a lot of changes that have happened, but you have to stay on top of your numbers. So that's the next thing that you need to do. All right. Now, uh, while we're still in review area, other tips for you here, what has been working for you in the past six months? Okay. Is it something, you know, have you made these adjustments to, to do certain things that you needed to in this business? I've talked so much on this podcast about connecting with your database as an example. Have you done that? What did do, what did, when you did do something, what was working? What, we'll talk here in a minute about what's not working as well and how to refocus it. But um, what are you most excited about? What did you kind of dabble and realize you need to do more of? So figure out what's working. And then obviously we're going to go say like, what's not working? And what's not working might be your attitude, okay? <laughs> you might have to change your attitude. What's not working is it's hard to work with buyers right now and buyers are frustrated, right? Um, I have a couple ideas on, on some things to help you with that too when we talk about refocusing and rebooting, okay, your business. So what's not working, I want you to dig into, are there things that you're just not doing that you said you were gonna do? And then do the self, you know, the self look, deep into why you're not doing it. And I think the thing that always comes up for me, and it seems because it's a theme with all of my clients, is not touching base with the people that you already know. And I don't know if that's just like you feel like you're bothering them. You don't know what to say. And we go back in some of the podcasts we've done in the in the last couple months, and we've, we've given you text. We've given you reasons to call. Here's another reason right now. Hey, Matt, hope you have a great half 4th of July. You got any plans? Right. I mean, if you're wa if you're listening to this, it, it, it will be July 2nd when we post it. Uh, we got the holiday weekend coming up. There's always a reason to reach out to people. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, if you just did that, you would be able to connect with people who are thinking of selling or they're waiting a little bit more. They might do it later. You, you have to you have to make these connections. It's, if you're not doing it, then, you know, it's just not going to work for you. Right. Is there something that you need to recommit to doing? That might be one of them. Uh, is there anything that you need to take off your plate? Is there something that you're like, maybe you're farming or you're doing something and you're not all into it, then don't waste money. Or maybe you're doing advertisements on Zillow or some other place. Those platforms are all starting to change their model. Go evaluate that. Are you getting good leads from wherever your lead sources are? Could you put that money into something else? All right. So that's all the review part. Refocus. All right. What course corrections um, are you going to take looking back on this review part for a great Q3, Q4. That's the key thing here. What do you need to tweak? How do you keep it simpler? What do you do with your database, for example, um, to, to re-engage if you need to? Are you going to try something different in your business uh, that you're going to, you know, I don't think you need to do multiple things. We're always talking about three things, right? Your sphere of influence in your database is always one of them. And you're always adding people to that and nurturing them and getting repeat and referral business and doing activities. But then I think you pick two more. Now for me, with getting things going here in, in Vegas, uh, Vegas, we've got our team up and running and I'm physically now in the Tampa, North Tampa area. So for me, it's finding some people that want to do the way the way I want to be able to coach and, and, and run things, which is to be the local market expert, right? So it is folks that aren't afraid to get out and, and use social media and get in front of video and share that knowledge, right? And then we'll be running ads and doing things to that, to that area. But it's all about getting excited about, like I'm excited about learning a new market. It is a little scary too, because mm -hmm. I've never sold a house out here. However, I have 29 years of experience of understanding the real estate business, but I have to get out and preview homes and do all those things. So what is it that you need to get yourself up and get out and do? We're out. We're out and about now. People are out and about. We get time to get out of the house. Okay. And get out there and, and get excited about the real estate business again. All right. You know, there may be some things that you need to start, stop, continue. I just kind of mentioned that. So be really clear about that and get hyper-focused. On, and you know, on that hyper focus stuff, what you're talking about here, Jan, is something that we have really gone into dip, uh, detail a lot in on our real estate sales builder course. 
uh, so it's top of mind for me. It's kind of the big aha that I think we that we've had as a, a coaching company is around social media and how yes. you need to focus on uh, to pick a lane, as we've been saying to uh, to uh, for the last six months or so. Find your find your your uh, your platform of, of choice, the one that's going to work best for you. Pick it, and then. You don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to be all over the place. And I'm going to tell you, if you stop, if you are right now trying to do all of that on social media, you're going to be, find yourself with a lot more time on your plate to do other more productive things if you focus on one. But but to your point, and we're working on a new workshop actually, uh, and it's basically I'm modeling the things that Cosmo has taught us that we're mm -hmm. doing with our team in Vegas, and I'm I'm learning to do here. And it is about how to become the agent of choice and That's how right. to compete in a market that has changed where Zillow is turning more into a brokerage and realtor.com. They're all moving to, you can't even buy a zip code anymore. You're, you're, you're having to, in fact, I just got some information about maybe Zillow moving to an area where they're partnering with local brokers. Hmm. Um, and then, you know, not even agents, agents aren't going to be able to, to, to do that anymore. Realtor.com already is definitely doing that. They want to partner with large teams and brokers. And then you go through their op city. They, they, they gave it a new name. And, and frankly, I, I, there is no perfect solution for any of that. Well, what we're doing is we're going to go do it our own way. We're going to go become those local experts because I think people still want to talk to a real person who knows the area yeah. who they know like and trust and there is a strategy of how you do that and how you do that is you pick the the platform of choice you can't be on all the platforms you can post some things cross platforms but you need to own a platform and for me it's it's going to be youtube now will we go post our videos and, and have our virtual assistants and team break things down so that we can get stuff on linkedin and facebook and yeah we are, but I am wanting to focus on YouTube videos because of the reach, but that's a, that's a choice. You could be Instagram and it could be the place that you're going to kill it. There's so many agents that are doing well with this, but it's because they get up every day and they do stories all day. They yeah, do stories it's, it's on a full -time the fly. Job. Right. They do stories when they're out there because it's just the thing they do. They're comfortable with it. They're doing behind the scenes thing. People get to know them. And what they're doing is almost becoming that local celebrity in a way. And you don't have to blow it up and be a huge influencer. However, if you're consistent and you've got great content, people are going to find you and they're going to follow you until they go, hey, I'm ready now. I've been watching your content for six months. I feel like I know you. Oh, I'm actually talking to you. Thank you. I'm ready to go buy a house. All right. And people don't always connect with you. They don't want to be bothered, but right. they are looking and they're Googling and they're doing things and there's things you can do so you can separate yourself from all those other lead generation things and do your own lead generation organically and then maybe pay for ads. Now, listen, I'm going to jump into reboot right now and I'm going to jump ahead because I'm on a roll right now. And what I talked about in our last um, podcast about uh, how to uh, Google uh, boost your local authority. That's what we called it mm -hmm. with Google is imperative. It is imperative that you go w listen to that and watch that, that podcast video where I talk about Google, my business, Google service ads, getting reviews on Google. It, it, you have to do it if you're going to be a local business person. Okay. So we covered that in detail. Go check it out. Cause that's one of my ideas for you here. You've got to reboot your business now. So you've done the review, what was good, what was bad, what I need to change, what are my course corrections. You're getting yourself refocused, your mindset. We're talking a little bit here about being that local market expert. So let me give you some more ideas about what you have to do to make this reboot work. So one is to go back to your database, okay? Huh. And I want you to recommit again. Now, if you haven't done this, even if you have, let me tell you a couple great ideas. Why don't you plan a fall or um, summer or fall client event. Awesome. I have a couple clients doing this right now, especially if you, you've done these in the past. Even if you've never done this, this is, people want to get together again. If you don't want to do it in the summer and you want to kind of still wait out COVID a little bit more and see where we are, then plan an event. And then that's another reason to call people and say, I'm going to have a get together. It could be a small group. You're just A plus clients. It could be some outdoor event. It could be, you know, renting a park, a place in a park and just right. inviting everybody to come and get together and do that and be outside. It could be a restaurant that has something outside, whatever. I think this is a great way to re-engage with the people in your database. And then you can call and text them and, and tell them, save the date and then check in with them, right? 
Um, not, next, I think you need to refine your listing skills, okay? Need to work on your listing skills. More people, if you've been just working with buyers, buyers are frustrated. I'm going to talk a couple things on that in a minute here, but I want you to focus on getting more listings that starts with your database. We are, just mark my words here, within the next six months, we're going to start seeing the inventory come back on the market. Why? Because of the moratorium, which of course has been extended yet another month. It was supposed to expire yesterday mm -hmm. as we record this, but it has been extended for another month through July. So that's for the tenant evictions and the moratorium. Now, what I we know is going to happen by the end of the year is people who have been behind on their house payment, okay, because they've lost jobs, are going to have to make a decision at some point. The yep. unemployment extension benefits are going to run out. There's so many people looking for so many businesses, right? It's so interesting. Businesses are every place you go says help wanted, but it's a really interesting place. Our, our country is in because it's people are sitting on the sidelines. They're making that extra little boost that was needed during the COVID crisis here. So people wouldn't lose their houses and they had some money. All right. And they've been putting it into the economy, but they're not ready to run out and get the $10 an hour job. So, you know, when they, why would they? if they can, can make more. Okay. So, but that's going to change. And then uh, I think businesses are getting realistic and some of them are getting real about it closer to a $15 an hour, you know, pay. I mean, we're just talking about labor jobs, right? Hourly wage jobs, let alone some people have decided to go get a different career and take the opportunity to go do it. But all this is going to sort itself out. And I just think that some of those folks who haven't been making payments are probably going to say, well, I better go ahead and get what equity I have. And that's going to bring houses on the market. Yep. So do I think investors are going to cash out? Why? Because they think that the market's going to adjust. And I do too. I don't think it's going to crash, no. but it's going to adjust. It's not going to keep going up and because up. Because it and needs up. to adjust. It will adjust. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's all going to happen. No, we, we'd all be rich if we knew exactly when it's going to happen. Exactly. Have to stay on top of it. So get, refine your listing skills. We have all of that covered for you in the real estate sales builder program. We have two whole modules on how to work with sellers because it's that important. So check, you need to go over to WBNL coaching and check that out. And by the way, did we decide on a code for our, our trusted listeners here? We did not. Us? That was on our list of, to do today. Well, you just, you pick one by the end of the thing here and we, well, we already have one picked. So let's just, we'll, we'll let you, we'll put it in the show notes. People go to our show notes. All right. Very good. Um, well, and if you, it'll be up in the video, it'll be, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be down in the description as well. That's Whatever right. the magic formula is that Matt's going to come up with. And definitely we're going to give you a discount on the price, but you can also get the free course for free and, um, and then uh, check it out and see if it was worth it to you. Okay. All right. So, um, but I do think that you need to get up to speed on listings and the listings are a different skill set, And we really cover that quite a bit. All right. So let's talk about counseling those frustrated buyers. Buyers are frustrated. We're all frustrated. Everyone I'm talking to, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. The average, the person getting squeezed here is the average homeowner and the little family, the FHA VA buyer who cannot compete as much, can't put the big down payments down, can't put as much together. Who's winning? Investors, people with cash, you know, people who are willing to pay over value. And that's the only way you're getting deals together right now. So be and ready remember, to, though, you know what? You could be in that same boat of being the one that's on the upper end of that or on the better hand of that. But at the same time, only one person gets the house. So, well, you know. this is why it's great to be the listing agent right that's now. Right. That's the whole point. Get yeah. be, get more listings because you're the one dealing with, well, okay, a headache. You have to deal with 10 offers, right. but you're getting your houses sold. I was just talking to Sharon Brown yesterday. Sharon, shout out to Sharon. She's a longtime client in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area. And, you know, she just had a house fall out, um, a deal fall out. And it was just over lend, you know, something happened to the people and they're, they went from full time down to a different type of, you know, part time didn't qualify for the loan. Well, she just called back the three people who also wrote offers. And of course there's someone who needs, uh, it's already back in under contract. Now that is a beautiful place to be in. If you're a seller, if you are a listing agent. So if you're a buyer's agent right now, you're struggling because and so are they, and you're, they're frustrated and they're, they're putting their frustrations out on you. So you've got to be good at listening and sh and being patient. And this is where helping everybody understand what's happening in the market, it ha it, you know, comes in. So obviously, I'm sure if you're 
actively working with buyers, you've already done the counseling of what does it take to win right now? And are there upsides? The scary part for me is thinking back to living through that downturn we had. You know, I don't think we're going to have it that kind of a downturn. Yeah. However, if you knew what you knew now back then and people were buying houses at the top of the market, those are the people that were in trouble a few months later or within a year later Absolutely. when their house was worth 50% of what it is. Okay. So at some point we're going to reach the top of the market and there's going to be an adjustment and maybe a correction. The only way, the only reason there'll be a correction downward is two things. If inventory comes more inventory comes on the market, but, and I also feel like the, the uh, rates are going to stay low. So there, there'll continue to be demand any inventory that comes onto the market trickling as it is now is getting eaten up. It's going to go. So it's going to take a lot more inventory and the builders have to keep building, which they're starting to do more. The lumber, all this excuse about it. It's not an excuse. It's the truth. The lumber costs are high, but I'm already reading and hearing about that's changing, yeah, but the everything. builders are in a great position. They can control things. They can say, yeah, we're not going to release all our lots. We're going to make sure we can maximize the profit on our houses. And so there's a huge demand. They're doing bidding wars right now. It's like, come on out. We have two lots and everybody can bid and whoever is the highest bidder gets the lot. And this is the stuff that I hate about uh, the way, uh, you know, it, it's just the way it is. And, you know, the free economy, right? Yeah. Back to it, your point, back to your point, Jen, about, you know, being able to counsel your buyer, you know, that really is a key thing to focus your, your talents on right now, because you're going to have to do it with your sellers, right? Because they're going to be those buyers. And if they're, if you don't counsel them to be realistic, and understand what they have to do on the other end of the deal, because that's, you know, how sellers are, they want to <laughs> sell high and buy low. Well, that, exactly to your point. So yeah. that's why also we don't have as much inventory because that's the right. seller would love to get the money out of their house, but they don't know where they're going to go. Right. So, this perfect storm of people who would have already sold and moved on coupled with the moratoriums lifting and investors deciding to sell. That's where I believe we're going to start seeing more houses come on the market. And when we do, then it will shift a little bit and we'll have to be dealing with that. But in the meantime, counsel your buyers. If they really need to buy now, then help them understand what they have to do to win the bid. Maybe what you have to do is help them get into a short term rental until things shift. Okay. Yeah. So you do what you need to do because they will, if you hang in there with these buyers, six months from now or a year from now, they'll come back and buy with you. So that's what I wanted to say there. And the only way to help is to stay on top of what's happening with the trends in the market and stay in touch with them if they turn into a buyer for next year. All right. And it brings me to the last point I want to make, and it's back to this be the local market expert. And it, it amazes me how many people can really not speak specifically about the market. Like what's the average sales prices? You can speak anecdotally about whatever you're doing, but you need to be the student of the market. And by that, I mean everything from checking the MLS daily, what's coming on the market, what do the trends look like, what are the average sales prices, get the, the everybody that is a real estate agent, a realtor in particular, through your local or state associations and through National Association of Realtors, you have tons of data. You just need to go get it and study it and look at it. And and there's all everybody here in Florida, they're great about here in the counties, the local association sends out something saying, here's what you need to know. And here's these great reports you can share with your clients. You That's where you start. Okay. There might be some other resources that are in your area. Um, you hear us talk about it all the time. My favorite resource is Keeping Current Matters. Yep. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes where you can get a free, um, a free 14 day trial and then you get, uh, if you sign up, it's our affiliate link. We get a free month free and then you get a $25 coupon. So it's basically free, a, a $25 gift card. Um, I love that. There's great content to put out there to help you with your social, but honestly, their market reports they do every month on the 10th of the month are designed to teach you, the real estate agent, what you need to say to your clients. Really and good. you could get their script, their slides, and turn around and do your own version of it. I do it every single month, uh, about to do it twice now. I do it for Vegas and I'm going to do my first one this coming up month in July. Now that I have my website done uh, okay. and my YouTube channel started, there's a lot of work to starting up in a new fresh mm. area. So I know where you're, what you're feeling, new folks and people that move to a new area. It's all good. I do believe the monthly newsletter is another way to get that local market expertise out. I talked about Google, my business, and making sure you have a presence on Google. You need a total online presence and all the key sites so people can find you. And then the last thing is what Matt was alluding to earlier is 
find your lane, you know, choose your site um, to be local and to do it organically. It, I think you can choose a social media channel of choice. It could be LinkedIn. It depends on who your client is. That's right. Who's your client and where are they? What do they use? Is it Facebook? Well, you could be doing Facebook lives. You could be doing Facebook posts. You could be doing Facebook stories. If it's Instagram, same thing. You, it's all about video though. It's all of them want you to do video, even LinkedIn. LinkedIn wants you to upload native video, not post the YouTube video onto LinkedIn. So does Facebook. Yep. Instagram wants to have you doing reels and you know, TikTok. Uh, now Facebook, or all of them are trying to compete with the TikTok and that's why Instagram has reels. Now YouTube has shorts. That's their version of vertical um, video which, you know, under a minute or so to try to get eyeballs on their huge mega Google's mega YouTube channel, I mean, YouTube platform uh, to compete. And so there's opportunities there. But any way you look at it, you uh, to be the local authority, you got to think like you want to be the person who is a content creator mm -hmm. and a local content creator. And you're just yourself. Don't try to, you can go Google other people and see what they're doing, but don't try to be those people because you won't attract anybody. You need to attract the people that you, you naturally already attract who you are now. So now if you just engage with that, and even if you're quirky or you're whatever, you have a crazy fun personality, let that show up. You'll attract people who want to work with oh, you. Yeah. You'll be more successful. Right? You're just being yeah. yourself and it can be anything. You don't, if you're not all about the stats, you'll learn. P stats can be dry anyway. You can do it in interesting ways. You can be out showing a property. People are just kind of interested in the whole behind the scenes thing, right? Okay, this is the day in the life of a realtor. Honest to goodness, you could almost create your own little HGTV show, okay, and do it in the form of shorts or uh, what do you call those things, stories. And then throughout the day, somebody says, here's what you're doing, or here's a great thing that just happened, or my client finally wanted to transit, won the deal after 20 offers we've written, or we ran into a problem and this is how we solved it. Those are all things that help people go, wow, I want that person working for me, yeah. right? Yep. And it doesn't have to be all polished. It's right done with your phone. You don't need any fancy equipment. You know, we talk about in our YouTube, Cosmo talks about in our YouTube uh, course, which will be launching here within the next 30 days or so, um, about all of that. What gear you could use to enhance. Do you, if you're going to do a lot of it, should you get maybe a, a, you know, and everything is under 100 bucks, right? A lavalier mic. Do you need a better mic and lighting maybe? But if you, as long as you have a, you know, a, a, a current, smartphone not one from 10 years ago but a current smartphone that has uh, the latest greatest camera stuff on it android or ios you know apple devices um you're in great shape that's all you need so all right that's it so do a mid-year review i want you to take time to review your numbers and what's working not working refocus recommit and then we just shared some ideas with you about rebooting your business. Um, uh, the show notes are all over. It's 172. I thought it was 173. I guess 172. I was 172 of the WBNL podcast. Go to WBNLpodcast.com. You'll get the show notes. And you'll also get uh, a link to go try our free course and a magical discount code that only you, our loyal listeners and YouTube followers, can get for our our new exciting course. Okay. You can get the show notes. You can get the information. What else do you have, Matt? That's all I had to, for today. Yeah, Mid-year well, mid update. Looking forward to uh, the next six months. I think, you know, the first the, the first part of the year started off really nicely. We'll see how we uh, continue to roll out and keep our momentum going. It's going to be a great, uh, 2021 is going to be a good year. The rest of 2021. <laughs> As we look back on it at the end of the year, we're going to say this. Was... I think it is. To me, it's going to be there's a theme in this year and it's rebuilding. You know, yeah. it's a rebuild year for me and and relaunch uh, fresh starts. Right. That's yep. what it was. Build for me. back better for crying out loud. Build back better. There you go. Yeah, that too. Uh, getting inching closer to the inevitable. Oh, I don't know. Uh, retirement years but i'm not ready to do that yet but boy my body says it's time to retire some days <laughs> yeah yeah i can talk, talk to that after being in the car for 12 hours and Ooh, uh, not as young as we used to be yesterday yeah, yeah they had zooming at 6 30 in the morning yesterday was a little tough and as the day went on i found myself getting cloudier and cloudier as far as the way my focus was it's really funny so yeah you gotta uh, hey listen to your body <laughs> 
Yes. She's not 21 anymore. No, I wish, but not. <laughs> I don't know if I wish I would be that. I, I don't think I'd go back to my 20s. Maybe, maybe my 40s, maybe my 30s. <laughs> All right. But here hey, we are. Do you have any plans for the weekend? Doing anything for the 4th? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't think so. Not not yet. I may go take a little stroll down to my little favorite beach down, Dunedin. But other than that, um, yeah, we're, we're it's been raining a lot. So it's been, you know, it's been quite, we've had quite a bit of rain in the last yeah, And I think with Elsa coming, even if it doesn't come close to landfall, you're still going to dump a lot of rain on uh, the Gulf Coast. So I think it's going to be kind of a rainy, certainly the start of next week is going to be raining. Yep, Just get that out okay. of there before I get there later on in the month. That's right. You come visit. We'll have some. We'll have hopefully some nice weather and do a little exploring, a little wandering. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting on a plane, even though they're going to be packed again. I don't know. It's been a long time. I did so much travel for the last five years, and to go like to have a That's just a, a halt for almost a year is a weird. I believe thing. I've traveled more than you. So yeah. Well, sure. you, of course you have this year. For for sure you have. Yeah, and I'll be heading back to. Uh, I've had a couple trips already east coast. I'm going back to Vegas in August. Uh, yeah. So there it is. Hey, speaking of, uh, you know, employers trying to entice people to, you know, to join uh, or to, to either come back or to apply for jobs. Uh, you know, there is a lot of people that are raising the minimum wage just on their own up to $15, even though the Congress wouldn't have to do that. Uh, a lot of companies have done that. But I noticed I read in an article yesterday that the Walt Disney Company in Florida is having a hard time getting housekeepers and stuff like that. So they're offering signing bonuses. Thousand wow. dollars either thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars signing bonus to go in and be a part of their housekeeping team. So their businesses are trying all sorts of things to get people back. Yeah, I have heard about. Uh, I didn't know about Disney doing that, but I've definitely heard about signing bonuses and even Amazon doing some of that. Yep, it's really interesting. So, very intriguing year we've lived through yep. uh, past in 2020. 2021 is the recovery year. It feels like, and I hope we are down that path and then we'll see what 2022 brings us right so but right now let's not wish 2022 upon us let's just refocus you know reboot what you need to do and uh have spend a little time making the most out of it and it's no worries whatever's happened in the past is the past now you're here today we've got some tools for you to help you stay motivated educated informed this podcast our channel over at youtube if you haven't subscribed and then these new courses so go check them out we're here to support you. There's more than enough for everyone. Let's all go get our piece of the pie. That's right. And, and please be safe out there this weekend. You know what? After being pent up for as long as everybody has in the world and in America in particular, since we'll be celebrating the 4th of July, you know, it's going to be a little crazy, I have a feeling. So uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Be safe out there, please. And I'm not talking just with your uh, COVID safety procedures, just with your firework safety procedures, yes. too, especially if you're anywhere on the West Coast in dry areas. So uh, watch out for that and then as always get up get out and be forever wandering but not lost see you next week <laughs>